Hey everyone, welcome to your practice. Today is going to be a 10 minute mobility and core class um, targeted for your low back. So a couple years ago I had a low back injury and I started doing this routine literally every single morning for the past three years and it has helped tremendously. So I hope it helps you too. We're gonna do some spinal mobility, hip mobility, some glute work and core work. Just a really nice, well-rounded morning routine. It might take about 10 minutes this first time, but as you continue to do it, usually it takes me five to eight minutes. It's pretty efficient. So if you have a foam roller, grab it. We'll use that for the first two movements. If not, no worries. Um, and if you don't, just take the first minute or so, jumping around, shaking it out, whatever feels good for you. If you have the foam roller, we're gonna take some nice long strokes down the whole spine, especially focusing on the upper back, the thoracic spine. You can cross your arms. You might hear some cracks or pops. And then bring the foam roller to the right side of your low back and take a few shorter strokes here. And then a few over on the left side. Come to sit your right bottom, your right glute on the foam roller and roll it out a few times. Over onto the left side. All right, right inner thigh, so you might turn your body down towards the right, and then move that foam roller up and down your inner thigh, your adductor. All the way to the top, the insertion up towards your groin and then down towards your knee, and then over to the left side. Just a few on this, and then we'll be done with our foam roller for actual foam rolling purposes. We will use it for our next movement if you have it. If not, you can use a yoga block, anything sturdy between your legs. So lay onto your back something sturdy between your legs. On an inhale, breathe down into your pelvic floor, feel some nice relaxation, expansion. On an exhale, squeeze the block or the foam roller, engage your pelvic floor and your lower core, and then take a bridge. So press down through your heels, lift your glutes as you extend your hips towards the sky. Inhale, release down, big breath, expansive relaxation, softening of the pelvic floor. Exhale, squeeze the block, engage pelvic floor and core, bridge up, using your glutes, driving your hips. Inhale to relax. Exhale, squeeze and lift. Two more with your own breath. Good, all right. Done with your foam roller, put it off to the side, stay laying on your back. And then if you can do a dead bug, lift your shins up to a parallel position. If that feels like a lot for you, you can of course do one leg at a time, or um, instead of hovering your legs, you could slide one in and out. I'm gonna cue the full dead bug, but take any modifications you need. So on an inhale, press your fingertips up towards the sky, your palms are facing each other. On an exhale, lower your right thumb overhead and your left heel towards the end of the mat. Inhale through center, bring everything back to midline and exhale, contract your core, lower your left thumb and your right heel. Inhale center, exhale opposite arm and leg are dropping down with control. Your spine is staying nice and stable. You do have a little bit of a arch in your low back, so a little bit of space between your back and the mat. Switch sides. But really your core is turned on. Everything is really stable in your midline, so it's just your arm and your leg moving. We're gonna do five on each side. I'm finishing up three. Inhale to reset. Exhale, lower right thumb and left heel. Over to the other side. And finish up one more on each side. Good. As you're ready, release. Take a side plank, lowering down onto your left elbow. And then stacking your right foot on top of your left. Lift up your left hip from the mat. From here, take a little bit of a turn towards the mat with your right shoulder, and then place your right hand on your left oblique, so the side of your core here. Breathe for five breaths. And I like to place my hands on the inside of my left hip bone, 
and feel a nice tightening there because we can do a side plank and not actually engage our oblique. So if you can, place your fingers here and then on your exhale, as you engage your core, see if you can feel that tightening into your right fingertips. For two more breaths. Good, switch it out, lower onto your right elbow, left foot stacks on top of right. Side plank for five breaths. Lower your left shoulder down a little bit towards the mat and place your left fingertips on the inside of your right hip bone. Breathing into the back body, the back of the rib cage. Exhale, feel that contraction. Three or four more breaths here. Big inhale to expand into the rib cage. Exhale, contract. Good, lower onto your hands and knees. Bring your knees hip width distance and then spread your feet out really wide to the side. Drop your hips back. So we're taking kind of like a frog pose, moving into internal rotation of the hips. Rock forward so the weight shifts back into your palms. Rock back so your hips sink back between your calves. Let's take just one or two more rocks forward and backwards. Perfect. And then take a pigeon pose. Bring your right foot to your left wrist and then your right knee to your right wrist. We're not going to lower all the way down. Keep upright so propped up on your fingertips. Extend your left leg back behind you. And then you could press into the right side of your shin to find some extra engagement through the external rotators of your right hip. Perfect, switch it out, not staying too long. So left shin steps forward. Your ankle can be pointed or flexed. Draw back through your right toes, press down through your fingertips. You could fold if that's more comfortable for you or you could press the whole right or left outer side of your left foot and shin and calf into the mat. Good, okay, child's pose. Sink your hips to your heels and then walk your hands over to the right. From here, drop your left hip down onto your left heel and take three breaths into your left lung. So really finding some expansion through the side body. Like you could inflate your left lung or really spread through the rib cage there. For two. For one. Big breath in, release it out. Good, shift forward just slightly, find a thread the needle. So left arm stays where it is, we lower down onto our left elbow. And then finding a twist through the upper spine, the thoracic spine, you can bring your right hand behind your back body or you can place it on the mat. Doesn't really matter, but think about peeling your right shoulder open and twisting from above the belly button. One more breath. And then switch it outside, child's pose over to the left. Glue your right hip bone down towards your right heel and stretch long through your right pinky finger towards the left side of the mat. Three big breaths into the right rib cage this time. Perfect, thread the needle. So just draw forward a little bit, lowering onto your right outer shoulder. And then your left hand can come behind your back or press into the mat. Find that twist open to the left for a couple breaths. Good, come to hands and knees, tabletop position. Five rounds of cat-cow. Inhale to drop your belly, lift your tailbone, lift your gaze and pull your heart through your shoulders. Exhale, tuck your chin around through the spine, tug your tailbone down between your thighs. Inhale to open it up. Close your eyes if it feels good. Find that nice fluid mobility through each spinal segment. And move with your breath. Inhale to open up. Exhale to press and round. One more breath in. 
one more breath out. Come back to a neutral spine. We're gonna move into bird dog. So ground down through your left toes, your left knee, and your right palm. And then extend your right heel back, left fingertips forward. This is a bird dog. Inhale for some, and again, you can modify kind of like we did with the dead bug. So if you wanna just slide your arm and leg instead of actually lifting them, that is a good option as well. So inhale for some length. Press out through the right heel. Exhale, curl right knee towards left elbow. Spine stays nice and stable here. Inhale, extend. And exhale to curl in. So pretend you had a glass of water on your back and you don't want to arch or dump through the spine and let that glass spill. Inhale, extend. Exhale, curl. Two more. This last round, hold for an extra breath at the top of your rep. Good, lower down and switch, switch sides. So left palm is grounded and right foot and knee are grounded. Breathe in to press out through your left heel as you lift your leg back and up and right fingertips forward. Exhale, curl right elbow to left knee. Our spine is staying stable. We're just moving through our opposite arm and leg. Inhale, extend. Exhale, curl it in. Three. Going for two more. Good, and then on this last one, as you stretch long, hold for an extra breath. Perfect. Two hands, two feet to the mat. Walk your hands forward a step or so. Tuck your toes and glide your hips back to downward facing dog. From here, bend into one knee and then the other knee, about five on each side. So just taking a nice calf and hamstring stretch, lowering one heel and then the other. And then find some stillness in the lower body. Bend your knees as much as you need. Press your palms forward and then kind of shrug, or not shrug, but pulse your heart back. So opening up through the lats, the sides of the armpits, pulsing your heart towards your upper thigh for two and one. Turn your toes out and your heels in. Sit your hips low, Malasana Yogi Squat. Hands come to center. You can sit up onto any type of prop you want. Push your elbows into your knees and your knees into your elbows and lift up through your spine. You can stay here. I like to add a little neck roll in one direction and then the other direction. One more breath here. Exhale, stand. For this last two movements, you can hold onto the wall or some type of prop for balance. Step your right foot forward and your left foot back into a high lunge shape. Stretch your left fingertips up and then over to the right. Press down through your left heel and feel a good side body stretch as you straighten your left knee and push your upper thigh towards the sky and pulse your left fingertips over to the right side. about five of those, straighten your front leg. We're gonna do a modified airplane. So back leg is still grounded for balance. We're gonna turn our left hip bone in towards our right inner thigh. So from the front, it looks like this, lengthening through the external rotators of the hip, and then use those same muscles as you open your pelvis to the left. Close the pelvis down to the right, and then engage those muscles, push down through your right big toe for balance, open the pelvis to the right. Just one more of these. Good, switch it out, last movement, last side. High lunge with the left foot forward. Reach your right fingertips up, press down through your right heel, and then as you pulse your right fingertips over to the left, really straighten the back leg. About five of these hip flexor stretches. Good. Extend through your left knee. Find your airplane for three reps. So right hip bone lowers down towards the left inner thigh. Ground down through your left big toe. Use your left hip muscles to open your pelvis up to the right again. And then lower it, close it. That angle of your left hip crease. Open it back up. And one more. Open it back up. Good. Take any final wiggles that you like. Um, 
hopefully that felt really good. Like I said, I do that every morning and when you don't have to listen to cues, when it becomes kind of natural and second nature in your body, it really takes about five to eight minutes and it's a nice run through of the whole body. It has helped my low back pain that combined with walking in the morning, such a good little treatment plan. So I hope it helps you. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next time.